Luke chapter 2, turn real fast. Luke chapter 2. You've heard part of this, but I want to focus on the shepherds today. And we've been reading some of these verses throughout the entire month because of the Christmas story. This is all at the front end of the Gospel of Luke, and Luke is a great book to look at. In fact, we're going to begin a journey next week going through the entire Gospel of Luke between the first of the year and through Easter time. So please take a second, if you get a chance, to start reading the Gospel of Luke every day. It's a great book that tells us who Jesus was. If you want to be a Christ follower, you've got to know Jesus. And he is definitely, definitely discovered in the Gospel of Luke. Luke chapter 2, uh, we're going to go to verse 8 and kick it off there. And you've heard some of this, but it needs to be reread just for context of today's conversation. It says, and there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news. Now watch this close. That will cause great joy for a few people. No, it says for all people. Who's, who qualifies as all people today? That's all of us, right? Keep reading here. Today, here's the good news. Today, everybody say today. today. Come on, say today. today. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. Just think for a second if you could put yourself in their sandals next to their sheep. How would this have heard in your ears? How would you have received this in your ears today? It says, he is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appear with the angel, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth. Peace to those on whom his favor rests. Verse 15 a few more verses to go. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. And when they had seen him, they spread the word. Watch this. And when they had seen him, they spread the word. Someone will say it again. When they had seen him, they did what? They spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. Verse 19, but Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. Verse 20, here's our key verse today. The shepherds returned doing what? Glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. You're thinking to yourself, Marty, you're awful excited about a verse, aren't you? And the answer is absolutely yes. Watch this close. The angels came and proclaimed. The shepherds responded and went to see, and then they returned proclaiming that which was proclaimed to them. Now, what I just described for you right there is the entirety of what we recite at every service. And that is, I accept today the call to teach what I am what? Taught. The angels proclaimed, the shepherds heard. The shepherds went to see, and then they returned back proclaiming that which they had heard and now had experienced. There's a lot going on here. If you just read past this and get through it for the Christmas uh, morning experience so you can open up gifts, you miss what's going on in this conversation. This is not just a verse. This is a, a description of how to live out the Christian life. And I, I always try to read the Bible. And at some point after I read a verse or two, I try to put myself in the in the scripture text itself, in the story, in the village, in the place. And think of it this way. This was a moment that they had heard about their entire life. 
This was not like an unexpected event. This was an anticipated moment. They've been looking for this Messiah, this Redeemer, their entire life. All of Israel, all the Jews have been looking for and learning about and leaning into the idea that one day God himself would come back and visit this earth and that he would redeem his people back to himself. This was their hope. And now they're saying it's here. Now, what's interesting is they had known many other people who also had this hope. Their forefathers who had the same hope who had passed on. Relatives, friends, no doubt. And here they are. They're hearing in this. And the angels are saying, no, it's, he's here. It's now. And so they go and look. And all of a sudden, that which they had hoped for and that which they had heard about is now right in front of them. Can you for a brief moment today get your mind around that? Can you for a brief moment put yourself on their sandals and on the hillside with their sheep and realize that everything that they've been hoping for was now looking at them? I came across this liturgy from the 5th century. I want to read it with you real fast today. Just read it out loud to you. It says, let all mortal flesh keep silent and with fear and trembling stand. Ponder nothing earthly minded for with blessing in his hand. Christ our God to earth descendeth. He came to this earth. Now watch what it says next. It says our full homage to demand. Jesus did not come as a window treatment. He did not come for those who were looking around. Have you ever at this time of year been in a shopping mall somewhere or a shopping center somewhere and someone walked up and said, can I help you? And you in wonderful Christmas cheer fashion said, no, I'm good. I'm just looking around. Who's ever said that before? I'm just looking around. And then within an hour, you're looking for help, can't find help. It's like, I need help in the store. Who is anybody working today? Well, yeah, they were trying to help you a minute ago and you kicked them out. Jesus did not come for those looking around. He came to show us how to live a life that glorifies the Father in heaven. He came to be the living example of what it means to lay everything on the line in submission to the Father and to glorify him above all else. Jesus did not come just for the casual shopper. He came for the person to experience him, be transformed by him, and then go and live a different life. The Christian life is not about window shopping. The Christian life is about total life transformation. These shepherds heard, these shepherds went to see, and these shepherds left to proclaim that which they had heard. What is your response today to Jesus? Jesus met many people in the Bible. For example, the rich young ruler, he walked away sad because he had many possessions. He did not want to do what he was told to do. He had this interest in eternal life, but when Jesus put it on the line, he thought, man, I just can't do that. That's just too much to ask. He walked away sad. The woman at the well... In John chapter 4, that met Jesus, that talked to her about her entire life. She left him and went and told everybody in the town. She said, come and meet the man. She brought people to meet Jesus. In the scripture, another man met Jesus as a guy by the name of the blind man. We don't know his name. We call him the blind man. He don't have a name. He has a condition. He was confused. I get it. He wasn't sure what happened, but he just knows this. He knew he, knew he was once blind, but now he sees. He's not sure what took place. And the religious folks are grilling the guy saying, hey, who was this man? Was he this? Was that? And he goes, hey, I don't know. I just know that I have been changed. And I could tell you today that maybe today you're not a theologian. That's fine. But maybe you just know that your life has been changed because you met Jesus Christ. What about a man named Zacchaeus? The tax guy. Zacchaeus met Jesus, and he went from being greedy to being generous. Nobody ever left Jesus quite the same. In fact, in the scripture, it seems that Jesus really either engaged people or enraged people. They were either transformed by him or they were ticked off at him. 
They were either completely moved to a different way of life or they were set deeper in stone into their earthly and selfish and pride-filled ways. And I would argue that each one of us in this house today and those watching online may find different points in our, our journey in which we're trying to respond and figure out how we're going to respond to having met Jesus. What about Herod? He's the main guy in the story of Jesus' life. He was the king and he was the guy that wasn't happy about a new king coming along. Herod wanted to kill him. While Herod was looking to kill him, Israel was hoping for a redeemer. There was a redemptive anticipation that this is the moment that we've been waiting for. See, people that met Jesus just never walked away the same. And that's my prayer for you today. As a follower of Christ, it's not enough to peek into the manger scene at a store somewhere or put it up on your mantle. It's not about window shopping. It's about realizing that Jesus came to transform and change how you live the entirety of your life. And the shepherds show us this. They literally had heard the proclamation, and now they're in a position to go and proclaim that which they had heard. A disciple is one that is taught for the purpose of teaching. You're never just in church for you. You're always here for everybody you'll interact with this week. Maybe this week you'll meet someone who needs to know that God keeps his word. Maybe this week you'll meet someone who needs to experience salvation. Maybe this week you'll meet someone who needs to know that God loves them just as they are. And I can go on and on describing the nature of humanity, and I can tell you that in a service like this, you're going to hear things, experience things that are sent to you and proclaimed to you so that you can go and share the good news with somebody else. Because that's how this works. When I think about this, I... Remind myself of Luke 20 or 220 again, it says that they they returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen that were just like they were told. So here's my question for you today. What is your response to having encountered Jesus? And maybe you haven't encountered him yet. Maybe today will be the day that you do that. Maybe this is the day that you encounter the Son of God in your life. But maybe today you would say, Marty, I encountered Jesus a long time ago. Well, my, my question back is, my asking back is, what's that been like? What have you done with that response? What did he do in you that transformed how you live your life? Because if encountering Jesus as a baby sends the shepherds away proclaiming what they had heard and seen, how much more should encountering Jesus as a Savior send you away proclaiming what you have heard and seen? Yeah, I'm going to land the plane with three basic thoughts today and give it to you for your notes purposes. Here we go. First of all, the shepherds were proclaiming because the promises from heaven were true. This was prophesied back in Isaiah chapter 7, 14. The Bible says, therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will call him Emmanuel. Isaiah prophesied all these things 700 years before the birth of Christ. Do you know God keeps his promises? Do you know every promise God has made to you, he will keep it to you? God is not a man that he should lie. All his promises are yes and amen. Everything God has told you in this book, he will keep it to you. His promise about salvation, his promise about healing, his promise about eternal life, his promise about forgiveness, his promise about Jesus, his promise about your blessing, about generations, and, and all the things God has for you. But do you know that many times the devil wants to make you doubt that God will keep his word to you? The devil loves to isolate he loves to put you off by yourself, making you wonder, does God care? Does God even see me? Does God know I exist? If you've ever lived a day on this earth, at least one time in your life, you have wondered, does anybody care about me? And maybe more than once a day, but all of us have been there at least once in our lifetime where you're asking yourself, does anybody even care? Does anybody even know? Person A disappointed me. Person B broke their word. I would say all of us here have had someone break their promise to us as well. We've all been there, but not God. 
everything God said he will do, guess what, Calvary Church? He will do. God's promises are true. And they were rejoicing because all they had ever heard was coming to pass right in their view. This was a tremendous affirmation that if this is true, everything else is true too. But why does the devil love to make us wonder and love to make us doubt? Let me give you one he makes us doubt about. He makes us doubt, are all our sins really forgiven? You ever doubted about that before? Ever thought about that? You ever had that brief moment where you thought, well, maybe yes, but what about this one? You know what? The Bible says it crystal clear. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. The Bible says right there, he is faithful and just. God's promises are true today in your life. Everything God has told you he will do, he will do. The second thing that they were rejoicing about in this conversation is they were excited and they were proclaiming because their hope for redemption was now. Salvation had been looked for, redemption had been looked for, but now it's here. It's in the present moment. Matthew 121 says she'll give birth to son and you're to give the name of Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. They're rejoicing because redemption is here. All we had looked for, all we had longed for has now shown up. Jesus, the Messiah, the Savior of the world has arrived. Here's some good news. Here's some good news. He was not just their Savior. He was not just their Messiah. He is your Savior. He is your Messiah, and he can be yours today. He can transform your entire life, save you from your sins, forgive you of your past, and give you eternal hope because Jesus still saves people today. Do you believe it? He absolutely does. Be encouraged by the truth of that. Don't ever forget that. The shepherds were proclaiming because heaven had now touched earth. Heaven had touched earth. Matthew 1.23 says that the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son. They will call him Emmanuel, which means what? God with us. God himself came to this earth. Do you realize what that means? That means that God is interested in the affairs of men. God is not indifferent to this planet. God is not indifferent to what you go through. God does not sit in heaven and go, oh, I'm not worried about that down there. God literally chose to come back to this earth in the form of a human being. Jesus himself lived a life. The scripture says he was tempted in all ways, yet without sin. That means where you have felt struggle, he understands this. If you've ever struggled before, you've probably said to yourself, I'm the only person who's ever fought this battle in my lifetime. That's that isolation conversation. Jesus became the captain of your salvation through sufferings and pain. He was betrayed, falsely accused, abandoned, alone. We go on and on. He overcame all those things. Why? Because God cares about what happens on the earth. God came to the earth. So what's this all mean to you today? Well, for some of you in the room and online, it means that today is a day that you're reminded that God keeps his word. Maybe the enemy has been trying to test you and press you to doubt if God will come through. You've heard something preached, something taught, you've read something in the Bible, and you thought to yourself, well, it all sounds good, but I don't believe it. It hasn't happened yet. If you be, like me, I've been in church my entire life. I've heard about the rapture my entire life. Hasn't happened yet. 
Because if it happened, I wouldn't be looking at you right now. Some of you might be. I'm not here. Loosen up a little bit, folks. But I believe he's coming back one day. I believe it. You know why I believe it? Because he came the first time. And God keeps his promises. So when the devil likes to pop up in your head and say, oh, that may not happen. No, 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 no. I got proof that God keeps his word. So maybe that's for you. Maybe today is the day you receive that and you say, Marty, I need to increase my trust in God today. Or maybe today is the day that that you begin to realize that Jesus is your redeemer right now. And today could be the day that you make your heart right with him. You give your heart back to him and say, Jesus, be my Lord, be my Savior today. Today could be that day in which everything gets realigned properly. Today could be that day that you're forgiven of your past. You receive him as not somebody else's redeemer, but as your redeemer. Not somebody else's savior, but your personal savior. Maybe today is the day that you remind yourself that you were taught this message so you can teach somebody else the same. Maybe today is the day that you hear this so you can be equipped to go out because a disciple is one that is taught for the purpose of teaching. Not just the purpose of learning, not just the purpose of more information, but disciple is one who is taught for the purpose of training somebody else. That's what disciples do. Disciples are educated so they can educate. They are taught so they can teach. They're transformed so others can be transformed by their life. Let me just summarize it again. It's real simple. Today be reminded that God keeps his promises. Not a single word that God has spoken in this book will fall short of fulfillment. Not in my time necessarily. God does not operate on Marty's calendar. Kind of like shipping this Christmas. We'll be getting gifts for the month of February, I think. God's word doesn't line up with my schedule, but it always lines up with God's character and God's integrity and God's attributes and God keeps his word. Secondly, today Jesus can be your personal savior. Redemption's now. It's here. It's today. It was then, and from that point on, it's always been. I thank God that God still gives grace and mercy to those who are far from God. And I thank God that he gives grace to those who fall while they're walking in faith in Christ, that stumble and fall. I thank God that grace applies for all of us today. And maybe today is the day you leave here and go, I'm going to go teach what I've been taught. You say, but Marty, I'm not a theologian. Neither was the blind man that was healed. All he knew was he had been changed. All he knew was he once was blind but now he sees. Thank you for watching the Calvary Church YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss a video. If you made a decision to follow Christ today, be sure to text CC New Life to 94000. Someone from our team will reach out to you, say hey, and talk a little bit about what that decision means for you. For more information on our church, head to calvarynaperville.org or follow us on social media by clicking the links in the description. Hope to see you in person soon. Have a great day.